All right. I want to do one more optional example with you guys, just in case you're curious, because while we don't have enough time to really go into um, all of the ways we can use continuous game setups like this in this class, I just want to show you, if you're interested, a way that the same framework can be used for problems other than oligopoly. So another really important application of game theory is to problems of public goods, right? Or other situations where we have different entities that are deciding how much they want to cooperate with each other. So let's think through an example, right? A public goods problem where let's imagine that the cities of Los Angeles and San Diego are each deciding how much they want to invest in um, an earthquake early warning system. Right? Essentially, the idea here is that because the two cities are close enough to each other, um, any early warning that LA gets is going to be useful for San Diego. Any early warning that San Diego gets is going to be useful for LA. Right? Really, we want a regional system to warn the entire region of an earthquake. However, because LA is a bigger city than San Diego, we might imagine that the benefits to LA of producing the system are a little larger than the benefits to San Diego. So we might think that LA's benefits are something like 4Q to the 1 half, San Diego's benefits are something like 2Q to the 1 half. This makes sense? Where our P of Q here, right, is basically telling us the willingness to pay for an additional um, hour, let's say, of warning for, for an earthquake. Good? On the other hand, let's imagine both cities can invest equally, you know, at equal cost in additional warning, and there's a constant marginal cost for doing so, right? So the cost is just Q. Cool. Okay. So I want to think through a couple of things here. The first thing I want to think through is, what is the optimal amount to invest in this system if the two cities were working together? Then I want to think about what's going to happen if the two cities make independent decisions, right, using game theory. So let's start with the cooperative outcome. Right? So then we would say the marginal cost is 1, right? Derivative of Q is 1. The benefit is going to be 4Q to the 1 half plus 2Q to the 1 half, right? The benefit to each of the two cities. So the marginal benefit is going to be the derivative of this with respect to Q is going to be 2 over Q to the 1 half plus 1 over Q to the 1 half, which equals 3 over Q to the 1 half. Make sense? So we'll want to choose Q, where the marginal cost equals the marginal benefit, right? So where 1 equals 3 over Q to the 1 half, Q to the 1 half equals 3, Q equals 9. This make sense? We want to think about this graphically, which I should have done to begin with. Right? Essentially what we have is a constant marginal cost of one, right? Each hour of early warning costs us one dollar. We have a benefit to LA like this. We have a benefit to San Diego like this. Right? So we have a total benefit like this. Marginal cost equals marginal benefit at nine, right? So nine hours of warning is the right amount. A tenth hour of warning would be worth less to the two cities combined than it would cost. Cool. So now let's think about what happens if each city makes their own independent decision. We'll do so exactly the same way we thought about the decisions that Ford and GM are going to make, right? In other words, we're going to figure out San Diego's best response to LA. We're going to figure out LA's best response to San Diego. Let's start with LA. So what LA is going to do is they're going to say, let's say that I knew how much San Diego was going to invest in the early warning system, right? Let's figure out how much LA should invest. And to do this, let's note that, you know, LA's willingness to pay here for Q is really their willingness to pay for the combined investments of each of the two cities, right? So we'll say PLA, QLA, QSD. Right, is going to be 
4 times QLA plus QSD all to one half. Right? The marginal cost will, of course, just be one. So let's think about the marginal benefit to LA of investing in um, early warning, given that San Diego's already made some investments. The marginal benefit is just going to be the derivative of PLA with respect to QLA. Right? This is going to be 2 over QLA plus QSD all to the one half. Right? Using the chain. Great. So they're going to produce where their marginal cost equals their marginal benefit. Right? Conditional on however much San Diego has already built. So we'll say 2 over QLA plus QSD to the one half equals one, right? We can then say two equals, let's say two squared equals QLA plus QSD. So I can say that QLA equals four minus QSD. So what's this telling us? What this is telling us is that LA looks at this and says, well, if we're just thinking about ourselves, right? We're just thinking about how much early warning it's worth it for us to get, given the cost to us of an extra hour of warning, we're only really willing to invest in up to four hours of early warning, right? We said that the region as a whole would benefit from nine hours. LA is only willing to pay for four hours. On top of that, they're saying, if San Diego's already gotten some early warning, Right? We're willing to augment whatever they did up to four hours. But right, if they were investing in one hour of early warning, we're only going to invest in three. Right? We're going to reduce our investment as San Diego increases their investment. Does this make sense? And the reason this is going to happen right, is we've got this constant marginal cost. So regardless of whether they've only paid for one hour or two hours or three hours or four hours, Right? That fifth hour is going to cost them the same amount. That fifth hour is going to have the same benefit to them, regardless of what they've already contributed. So they're never going to be willing to contribute more than four. All right, let's do the exact same thing for San Diego. Right? So we'll say PSD, QSD, and QLA. It's going to equal two times QSD. Oh, bad colors. Plus QLA. All two to one half. Right? And of course, marginal cost. Still equals one. Okay. So their marginal benefit. is going to be exactly the same thing, right? PQSD, right? What the marginal hour of warning is worth to them. This is going to be one over QSD plus QLA, all to the one half, right? Marginal benefit equals marginal cost when they're producing optimally, so one over QSD plus QLA, all to the one half, should equal one. QSD is going to equal one minus QLA. In other words, San Diego only finds it worthwhile to invest in up to one hour of early warning, right? Given the benefits to them and the cost to them. If LA has already invested in half an hour, they're only willing to top up that investment up to one. If LA is invested in more than an hour of early warning, San Diego is not going to invest in anything at all. Right? I could really write this as like 
this, right? Because of the fact that we're not going to be able to invest in negative early warning, right? We're not, we're not imagining that San Diego can show up at the earthquake early warning system LA set up and steal parts. Right? So given this, what's our Nash equilibrium going to be? Right? We're saying that San Diego is going to invest in up to one hour, right? One minus whatever LA invests in. LA is going to invest in four minus whatever San Diego invests in. So if we imagine, let, let's try something and see what, what we get, right? Let's imagine that San Diego invested in um, one hour of early warning, right? So if QSD was one, right? What's QLA going to be? QLA would be four minus one. Three. What would San Diego's best response to three be? San Diego's best response to three would be one minus three, unless three is greater than one, in which case it's zero. Make sense? What's LA's best response to QSD of zero? Four minus zero is four. And QSD's best response to that is zero. So our Nash equilibrium is going to be where LA invests in four hours of early warning, San Diego invests in zero hours of early warning. Right? We can see that this is our, our um, Nash equilibrium because four is LA's best response to zero, zero is San Diego's best response to four. Beautiful. So we're going to end up, instead of getting nine hours of early warning, we're only going to end up with four hours of early warning, and 100% of our investment in early warning is going to come from the larger city. Right, San Diego is going to completely free ride off of the investments that are already made. This is going to be a very common outcome of public goods problems, particularly problems like this one, where the benefit of early warning produced in LA is identical to the benefit of early warning produced in San Diego. Whoever the highest value person is, right, the person who cares the most about, or, or entity that cares the most about the public good, makes all of the investment, everyone else free rides, and we end up with underinvestment in public goods, right? This is essentially a game theory outcome that completely matches our general intuition understanding of externalities in public goods. Okay, beautiful. Um, you know, by the way, right, situations where this, this comes up, right, where this is important, um, this is often discussed in the context of national defense, right? If we think about um, U.S. and Canadian military investments, we might think that Canada has very little reason to invest in the military because you know, any invasion of Canada is probably going to be stopped by the United States, right? This also comes up when it comes to things like infrastructure or um, public and social infrastructure, right? Schools, libraries, etc., where we might expect that, um, you know, if all of us benefit from the creation of a train system or a freeway from LA to San Francisco, right? If we left it up to each individual city to decide what they're going to build, the small cities along the way aren't going to contribute anything at all. Okay. Great, thank you for sticking with me. Looking forward to talking to you soon.